Hi, welcome back to church. This is a video just to let you know what to expect as we resume in-person worship starting September 6th. We're going to take you on a tour, show you some things to expect, let you know what's happening around the building, and then we'll come back here for some more general announcements. Again, welcome back, and on with our tour. We're going to start our little tour of the church here in the entryway. You'll notice that the doors will be marked for enter and exit. Uh, those are signs are on magnets, so there will be signs on the outside of the doors as well. We are asking people only to use this front entrance, not to use any of the other entrances on a Sunday morning. That's because when you get here, you'll be greeted by a screener slash greeter. The screener will ask you those health questions we were asked so many other places around symptoms, around contact with COVID-19, any, anything like that. There's a series of questions. I can't remember them all off my head. And they will take down your name and phone number. So we have a list in case contact tracing is ever needed. And you'll be asked to sanitize your hands. We have hand sanitizer right there. We are getting, we have ordered, uh, wall-mounted hand sanitizer as well. Uh, it just hasn't arrived yet. When it arrives, it will be mounted. I think the one in here will be mounted right there by the uh, alarm panel. You'll be asked to sanitize your hands. And if you're not, don't have a mask with you, we do have a supply of disposable masks. Um, we, the government provided a, a set of masks for every uh, church that asked for them. So we, of course we asked. So we have some disposable masks. And from there, you'll be met by an usher. We are going back to having ushers for at least the first period of time, who will lead you into the narthex. And we'll resume our tour there in the narthex. I just thought I'd pause our tour here in the narthex for a moment. This box is where we will be doing offering. The box will be on the table every Sunday morning. You're invited to, to place your offering in the box, either as you come in or as you leave. Um, and then as the ushers lead you into the church, you'll be asked to sit to fill the church from the front to the back. I'm just going to pan around here a bit so we can have a look at the aisle. So we're asking people to fill the church from the front to the back just to avoid people passing each other too closely. And then when we leave at the end of the service, we'll be leaving from the back to the front. Uh, when we come to communion Sundays, we will do our normal thing. Uh, there will be a bit of a change in that we will ask people to be seated to consume, but I will go through that on the 6th when we have our first communion service, and then the first of each month after that. Just continue panning here. Get us back to the narthex. You'll notice that all the coloring books and such are gone from that back end area as well. Here we have the narthex. Uh, as I said, we've got the offering just over to the left of the shot here. We will have the basket for the bulletins is there. You are invited to pick up a bulletin, but if you take a bulletin, we are asking that you take it home with you, pass it on to a neighbor, rather than leaving it here at the church. And we will have PowerPoint, so it's up to you if you figure you need a bulletin as well as the PowerPoint. You'll notice on the table over there, we do have a, another bottle of sanitizer in case you missed the bottle, missed sanitizing your hands as you came in. Well, once you've come in and been screened and you've gone through the, the narthex, the usher will lead you here into the sanctuary. We are having ushers to encourage people to sit closer to the front. One thing you'll notice is that on each pew, well, on every second pew, rather, we have little signs. This one, there's the banner. Uh, we've got Black Lives Matter just down the way there. Scrolling up here a bit more, got a Celtic knot. 
Uh, we've got a crest farther down. These signs are on opposite ends of the pew. So while this sign is on this end of that pew, on this next pew over, the sign's on the other end, and so forth. So that people would sit, a cohort of people, a family group, could sit at one end of one pew, while the other pew, somebody's sitting in the next one up. Trust me, it makes much more sense when you can be in here and see both sides and see the whole thing. But that's how we're spacing people out. So that you're on every second pew, but at the other end, on the other, alternating ends. We have it set up so that at the front here, let me just get to the front. Right now, this center, this wheelchair spot is set reserved for uh, technical support while we are waiting for our camera to be installed at the back. At the front here, on one side of the aisle, people are sitting on the far side. That's the piano side. They're sitting over by the, right in front of the piano. Whereas on the pulpit side, we start in the main aisle and then alternate back and forth. And of course we have the front of the church. Just need to change my angle a bit. And we'll zoom in a bit. We will have a microphone there on that stand, which we will use for announcements. We are asking only one person make an announcement during the week. So we'll have designated announcement giver. And if you had an announcement to make, you would hand it to me before the service and I could get it to the announcement giver. It's probably the easiest. And of course we have a communion table. The small podium is there because I'm probably going to do much of my service leadership from there and save the pulpit lectern. There we are. I'll just zoom back a bit. The pulpit lectern, that microphone will be used for the, by the scripture reader, and I will use my headset mic for the whole service. Uh, starting this Sunday, we will have people playing live music for postlude and postlude for prelude and postlude at least. Uh, we were still working out how hymns will work, um, so that will be mainly piano. We have to, and we will. See how the bells work out. The bells are having discussions about how they might be able to socially distance, probably spread their tables farther across the tape, the front, and possibly have bell music as well. I think that's about everything for the sanctuary. I'm just going to slowly come across here as a chance to show off our windows. Just tilt up a bit. Let me zoom out again because. Might as well take a look at our windows while we can. I love, my, I love our windows. They're a big hit no matter who we talk to. I'm not sure how well they'll show up on the camera, but... There we go. We've got Jesus praying. And then, of course, angle's wrong here to get them, but our, our Easter window's at the back. But more because at the back here... That back corner there is where we will be putting our sound booth when it, the equipment comes in. We're going to zoom a touch. You can tell we've taken half pews out at the back there. And that's where our sound booth will go when our new equipment comes. This might seem an odd thing to include in our church tour, the bathrooms. But I wanted to include them because one of the things we're asking is that we're asking we only use the bathroom one time at a, one person at a time. Uh, that's what that sign on the door says. I don't think I've got a good angle to show you the sign from here. Uh, but that's what the sign on the door says. And if you look beside each door, just get a bit closer here. On the side beside each door, there's a stool. And there's three things on each stool. There's a little sign you can turn around. On one side it says vacant. On the other side, guess what it says? That's right, it says occupied. As you go in, we ask you to turn the sign. It helps 
maintain the one person at a time. Also on each stool is a container of Lysol wipes. We ask you to take a wipe with you, wipe off the door handles, push where you push the door open, wipe off toilet handles, wipe off faucets as you go in, as you come out, and then deposit the used wipe in that little plastic container that's beside the, the, beside the wipes. One thing you will notice is that all of the bathrooms now have automatic light switches. So all you need to do is walk in and the light will go on and we have the timer set so that it won't go off on you while you're still there. But again, one time, one person at a time. And of course we have the nursery washroom still available. Uh, it won't have any signs on it. It will have a container of Lysol wipes on the counter. Uh, should you need to use that one? The next stop in our tour of the church is here in the friendship room. You'll notice it looks a little bit different right now. All of the uh, furnishing, all the furnishing with cloth on it, has been moved temporarily into the nursery slash Sunday school room for now to give us space to step space out to have us with hard furniture if you were having a meeting in here and the same would go for if you were having a meeting in the basement we would ask that you spray, spread your chairs out to as close to six feet as possible you sort of have them they were more spread out over the time they've been gathered and plumped a bit but they can be moved around easily and you have your gathering uh, the coffee pot is still in here, but right now we're not doing any food service within the building. So it's just there because it lives there right now. And what I wanted to do is I'll come around here. There's the lovely banner that Sharon has acquired. And if you look right over here, I'm going to zoom in a bit. In all of our meeting areas, whether it's here in the friendship room, on both sides of the basement, we have boxes like this. In this box, we have these spray bottles, which are for all-purpose cleaning. We ask people to spray and uh, wipe down any chairs or furnishings they use. And then in these bottles, they are labeled, there's bleach solution. And so we ask people to spray down the furniture, furniture they use and just let it sit so the bleach can dry and do its disinfecting. There is in each spot also, there we are, a bag to put your used cloths in for and people will take them and launder them and bring them back. And we thank Sharon for setting up our cleaning stations and for supplying the cleaning cloths. So that's what would, how it would look like if you were having a meeting somewhere in the church at this point. As I say, this is the friendship room, uh, but similar rules would apply for either the large or the small basement as well. Well, how do you like your tour? As you see, there are things that are changed, but there's also a lot that's the same. A couple of other announcements while I've got you. Uh, one is that CD met last week, and we decided that we're not starting Sunday School and Youth Group right now. We're going to wait probably until January. This gives a chance for those students to get a, used to a new routine at school for us to see how school start goes but also our youth group and Sunday school leaders are not only parents but are active at schools as well so it just eases that burden CGIT and explorers are still determining when they will start but they also aren't starting right away we need to give at least a month to let to see how the school start goes and how the rest of the world is going as you have heard, I hope, our first full Sunday back will be September 6th, Labor Day. On that day, we will have communion. 
communion, as I said in our tour, will be largely the same. The one difference will be that we will take our, our elements as we come forward and then return to our seats to uh, consume them. We will be using the plastic cups and we will be asking people to wear masks because one of the things we are asking is that as long as you're not sitting down, you wear your mask. As long as you're walking around, you are required to be wearing a mask in the building. I encourage people to wear masks while sitting down just because the pragmatic part of me says, what am I going to do with my mask if I'm not wearing it while I'm sitting there? So I encourage people to wear masks. I won't be wearing a mask while I'm, play, while I'm leading worship because we found that masks and microphones or a face shield, I do have a face shield, but face shields and microphones don't work well together. Um, probably musicians, if somebody playing the piano wouldn't be wearing a mask, well, need to wear a mask while they play because they're quite a distance from anybody else, well distanced. Other than that, I look forward to seeing you back here as you feel able. We will begin on September 6th and people will come and go as they feel able, as they feel comfortable. We are doing our best to make this a safe place. To, miss, to mitigate as much risk as we possibly can. I hope this tour lets you know how we're doing that. And if you have any other questions, feel free to give me a call at the office Mondays to Thursdays. Be well, my friends, and welcome back.